Hello everyone, Jeff here with an example of calculating a minimum variance or optimal hedge ratio. This is needed when a company is cross hedging, which means that it is trying to hedge one product by using a futures contract for a different product. In this particular example, we have a company that will need 150,000 pounds of frozen apple juice concentrate in September. There is a September contract available, but it is for frozen orange juice concentrate, and each contract is for 15,000 pounds. We have some other information here that uh, we will cover in a second, but first we want to get some of the easier details down. First question here, will a long or short position hedge this company's risk? This company needs frozen or uh, apple juice concentrate, so it wants to be obligated to buy, and the obligation to buy is achieved by a long futures contract. In question B, how many contracts are needed if we do not account for the difference between apple juice and orange juice? So if we were to pretend these two were the same thing, uh, each contract is for 15,000 pounds, and the company needs 150,000 pounds, so the answer here is just 10. Now on to the tricky stuff. Uh, these are not the same thing, so we have to figure out what to do here. Find the minimum variance hedge ratio, and there is a formula. H star, H for hedge, star is something that's often used to indicate the optimal amount of something, is equal to the uh, Greek letter rho is used to symbolize correlation between two things. The correlation coefficient between the prices of apple juice and orange juice is 0 0.08. Correlation is a measure of how closely two things move together. It's a value between negative one and positive one, where positive one means they uh, move exactly the same. Uh, zero means there is no pattern at all, and negative one means they move exactly opposite. So 0.8 means that they move reasonably close together, which makes it a decent cross hedge. Uh, continue on the, on the formula, we also need, uh, this is the Greek let lowercase sigma. Uh, so sigma S stands for the standard deviation of the spot price. The S is for the spot price. So sigma S, the standard deviation of the spot price of apple juice, the thing you are trying to hedge, and that in this example is 0.3. We will also need sigma F, which is the standard deviation of the futures price of orange juice. The F is for futures price. This is the futures price of the thing you are going to use to hedge, which in this case is orange juice. It is 0.6. So uh, to figure out the minimum variance hedge ratio, we just need to put some numbers in this formula here, and we're given all of those numbers. Correlation coefficient 0 0.08, and then we need to multiply by sigma s, and divide by sigma f, and if I were to pull up a calculator, we would find that this is 0 0.4. Uh, this number can be any have any positive value to it. Uh, technically it could have a negative value, but don't be uh, alarmed if you get an answer like 1.5 or 3 or something like that. That would be also valid. In this example it happens to be 0.4. And we'll explain what that means in a second. So there's you can plug numbers into a formula and get an answer, and then there's the you can explain it part, so we'll get to that. So find the number of optimal, find the optimal number of contracts here. Well, we found the hedge ratio. The ratio is the uh, ratio that you would need compared to if they were the same thing. So if we were using uh, apple juice contracts to hedge apple juice, we'd need 10 contracts. But we, since we are not using apple juice contracts, we're using orange juice contracts, and we figured out we need a ratio of 0.4, we don't need 10 contracts, we need 0.4 times 10 contracts, or 4 contracts. So the big question here is, why do we need 4 and not 10? 
Well, there are a couple reasons. One is that since the correlation is not one, these things are not perfectly matched to each other. The second and probably more important reason is that the standard deviation of the two things are different. And standard deviation is a measure of volatility or risk. We are trying to hedge something which has a volatility or standard deviation of 0.3, and the thing we're using to hedge has a higher volatility. It's double the volatility. So we are purchasing futures contracts of something that's volatile in order to hedge something that is not as volatile. That means we don't need as many contracts as we would if the standard deviations were equal. You have con to sort of exaggerate what's going on here. You're purchasing contracts with prices that are fluctuating wildly in order to protect yourself as a hedge against something whose price doesn't change as much. So you need fewer contracts in order to hedge. Um, this is what's going on in this example. The opposite could be true. If you were using a futures contract that did not fluctuate very much in price and the thing you were trying to hedge did fluctuate a lot, you would need more contracts than the uh, 10 here in, in this example uh, because you need to account for more fluctuation than the futures contracts are giving you. But here we need less fluctuation, so four contracts.